tech mogul Elon Musk has said in a recent interview earlier this week that people who work from home are morally wrong. Yes, he argued that it was unfair to those who could not work remotely, like us, and has productivity concerns. I have worked remotely before. Have you? Yeah. How was that? Yeah, well, all right, but it got a bit boring in the end. Uh -huh. um, but his, that was during the pandemic. I didn't have a choice. But is working from home a good thing for some people, or should we all get back to the office? Well, entrepreneur Piers Linney says he's a big supporter of working from home and believes it promotes more diversity in the workplace. Meanwhile, the founder of Pimlico Plumbers, Charlie Mullins, agrees with Elon Musk and says working from home is for lazy people. Well, there you go. That's what they think. Uh, Charlie, let's start with you then, shall we? Um, why do you think working from home makes people lazy? Well, I, I mean, there's many distractions there that uh, they, they just take them away from the workplace. But not only is it morally wrong, it's, it's also bad for the economy. It's an unfair system. And we won't want sort of, you know, doctors, NHS workers, police, fire, working from home. So it's an unfair system. And... and, and um, you know, it's also a mental health problem for them because there's, there's now a lot more sickness is happening because of working from home where they're not sort of interacting with people, they're not um, exercising. Uh, it's also unfair to other uh, members in the house that, you know, you've got to creep around and, you know, don't go in this room and don't be loud on this. So it, it's a totally bad system, but the, the real thing is I think it's unfair and it's damaging the economy and it's sending out the wrong message to future youngsters that have got to get into the workplace. I mean, that's the thing, Piers, isn't it? That there's, it's almost been painted as a bit of a utopia by some people and some companies, but as, I mean, as Charlie points out, there are plenty of pitfalls. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with Charlie, but uh, I think it's finding a balance, isn't it? So I, I work with some very large companies, you know, got 30,000 employees. I've done a lot of research on this and we've actually seen the impact of it. And it's finding a balance. The number one is, and Charlie's right to some extent, people working from home, they're not, if you force them to work from home almost, because you don't want to have an office, it costs money, then sometimes they might have the right environment. So you've got to think about that. But overall, having that flexibility, you've got remote working, hybrid working, asynchronous working, you know, where do you work, how do you work, and when do you work together? Um, and what it does do, though, means that your talent pool now, in an economy where we're struggling to find talent, means that you expand your talent pool. What Elon Musk said about, you know, factory workers is you know, something that is correct. But for knowledge workers, um, you want to be able to access talent wherever it is. We've got to find a balance. And I agree, I was a lawyer, so, you know, trainees and solicitors back in the day, you couldn't have done that remotely. You'd have to be in the office and meet people. And some of that skills that you pick up is by osmosis. You've got to be around people and understand it. So, you know, a lot of companies are, is it two days a week, three days a week? I think making it a policy that you have to work from home if you haven't got the right environment is probably swinging it too far in the other direction. Mm. I mean, th th Charlie, with all of this, I mean, there is a benefit, isn't there? I mean, you're, not, you're an entrepreneur, you, you know, you're a hugely successful businessman. Th th there is an advantage, isn't it, to, to someone who may live, I don't know, in Northumbria, being able to say, well, my place of work is actually in London, I can do it remotely, and people like you, Charlie, can then get the best talent. Yeah, well, uh, obviously for some people it, it must be, but, but we're going back, the, the, the real story, is, is it morally correct? Is it fair? Is it good for the economy? Is it good for mental health? And many, many other reasons. I think you, you, you can get onto somebody at home, they can't give you the information, they can't put the phone down, go and ask another department. So it's delaying things, that, and that's quite proven that, that things are being delayed. And, and, and then I say, you've got all the distractions that are, that are out there, and... Um, I think it's just, for me, it's just another way of having work shy, lazy people that are not prepared to come into the office. If they're going to work from home, I believe that there should be a, a two-tier wage system, 50% less if you're working from home. The ones that are prepared to come into work, let's pay them double the money. And, and I, I think you'll find that the working from home thing will go out the window completely. <laughs> Piers, what do you say to that? Uh, are you work shy and lazy if you work from home? Should you be on 50% less pay? No, what's quite interesting is uh, I was talking to a, a lady who she was working from home during COVID and she continued to do that. And her and her partner were saving £2,000 a year each on a season ticket. So, you know, it, it, that's a good thing potentially. But I think that it's important that we understand that whether someone sat next to you or in another room in a building <coughs> on another floor, technology now means that, that that doesn't really matter. But I think you have to find a balance that fits with your company culture. 
but I think that it's a mistake to try and to try and you know pull this back into people having to work in offices uh, because in some cases that's a mental health issue. Who wants to spend you know one and a half hours, two hours a day sat in traffic or on a train where you can't get a seat? And what if you're disabled? This gives you a huge opportunity to work for people where you couldn't work for previously. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, it's a valid point. I mean, you both raised valid points. Just very briefly, Piers, though, on, on this issue of, of the morality of it all, there is a danger, isn't there, becoming a bit of a two-tier society, or more of a two-tier society. If those who are you know, seen to do the sort of white-collar jobs could all work from home and save money on transport and all the rest of it, and blue-collar workers, well, they end up doing all the running about and and becoming second class, in effect. Well, depends how you look at it. I mean, we've always lived in, a, sadly, a two-tier society. But if you're a knowledge worker, the machines are coming for you a lot faster than somebody working in, in a factory uh, currently. If you're a knowledge worker and working in the information economy, you know, you're being chased by you know, AI and technology like that. Whereas if you're a manual worker, for example, you've got to do it with your hands or talk to customers, technology is a bit further away. So you can look at it that way, that... People that can work from home are the ones in, you know, most threat from new tech. Oh, well, no, it's, it's an interesting mm -hmm. perspective. It's left me very much sitting on the fence. Either way, I can tell you both. Charlie, Piers, really good to see you both this morning. Thank you.